Okay guys, I want to do a, uh, another video today. This one about uh, how to choose offshore fishing reels. It's kind of, this is a difficult video. I, I've tried to do it three or four times and it just keeps turning into this big rambling mess. There's so many options and so many variations on the way people fish and how people fish that ultimately I'm going to kind of start at the end and tell you that the, the best way probably is to go to the marina, talk to the charter captains, charter, talk to guys that fish in your region, um, and sort of get a feel for what they use and why they use it. And it, it'll probably give you a, a more specific idea of what you need to fish where you fish. Um, that being said, I would like to uh, maybe describe a couple of the different kinds of reels so that when, when you start talking to them, you have an idea of which kinds they're talking about. Um, basically, offshore fishing reels are divided into two groups, uh, but I'm going to divide them into three. The first group is um, spinning reels, like this. The second group is conventional reels, like these. And the third group is really conventional reels, but it's the new high-tech conventional reels. And we'll get to those in a minute. Okay, let's start with spinning reels. Spinning reels are great. Um, they are uh, especially good for uh, if you're doing some light offshore fishing, like your pitching baits and... Uh, uh, maybe some light bottom jigging or, or you're fishing for yellowtail snapper or smaller fish or or um, you're fishing for um, with kids or inexperienced fishermen they have a couple of advantages in that you don't have to thumb the line as you're reeling it back onto the reel to keep it level uh, they do that for you um, the weight is underneath pulling down as you're reeling so you don't have this kind of uh, rolling torque action that sometimes you have as you're reeling the reel, which is better for inexperienced fishermen. Um, it, you know, it just it just has some advantages. It's much easier to cast for inexperienced fishermen. So I really feel that every offshore boat should have a couple, three uh, spinning reels available because you they're just real handy little reels, especially if you're casting and pitching. Um, this is a 6,000 version. They come, the spinning reels usually are listed at a, like a thousand number. Uh, you know, 2,000 and 3,000 are usually inshore kind of light spinning reels for speckled trout and uh, flounder and things like that. And as the number gets bigger, the reel gets bigger. This is a 6,000, uh, which we've caught, you know, fish up to 60 pounds on one. Uh, this is an 8,000 Saragossa, uh, which is sort of a, Shimano Stella light kind of reel. Um, this is 8,000. We've caught grouper up to 60 pounds on it. it they're very strong. They're very handy. Uh, and the, these reels get up into, the, I think the t biggest one I've ever seen is a 20,000, which is used to, to cast poppers to big yellowfin tuna. But, you know, the, the 8 to 10 to 12 sir, is a very good size for offshore fishing. I have some smaller ones here because like, these are what my son fish with. Um, so the, you know, spinning reels are great and, uh, I would recommend people get, uh, get a few and, and use them. Now, the next category is conventional reels and they come in two varieties. One is, um, a lever drag variety where, um, this is free spool as you pull the lever all the way back. And, um, once you, in, you're ready to engage the drag, you push it forward all the way to this stop. You, the beauty of this is you can have a, a predetermined known drag because this can be set a pre, ahead of time. Um, so you know exactly what drag poundage you're setting your reel to for at any particular time. And it's, it's variable here to this, but this is usually the strike position where you set it when you finally engage the drag. The stop here that it stops at can be pushed in, and you can add more drag if you need to. Uh, the second kind is a uh, a star drag reel, uh, which has a, you know this en engages the spool, free spool, but the drag is set by turning this little star here on the side. Um, the the advantage of this is you can adjust the drag a little bit as you're fighting the fish if you need to. They're they're usually significantly less expensive than a lever drag reel, um, and they can usually, uh, you know, it's a tough call um, on which one's better. 
I guess ultimately this this lever drag is a better reel. They're more expensive though, um, but in, you don't always have. It's nice to be able to play with it a little bit to adjust it. Um, this is another star drag reel. This is a graphite frame pin reel with a little star drag. And um, these this reel I use for light trolling for kingfish. And uh, this this reel is set up with braid, and I use it for uh, butterfly jigging. It's a small reel, so you can jig with it without getting really tired. Um, and they all handle big fish. Now these two reels here are uh, Tierno reels, Tierno's reels from Shimano, which are sort of the end evolution of the uh, TLD series that Shimano had. They took away the graphite frame. They're mechanically they're very similar. Uh, they just sort of bulked them up and put a metal frame on them. Uh, these TLD, the TLD series uh, from Shimano and the Senator series from Penn, have probably caught more fish in the Gulf of Mexico than in the Atlantic than any other reel. Uh, they're just good workhorses, and now they're, the new modern versions of these um, are, 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 are very good reels. Um, one is set up with braid for trolling, and the other one, I mean, with mono for, for trolling, and the other one is set up with 100-pound uh, braid for heavy bottom fishing. And uh, the Senator series is the same way from Penn. They, uh, they've upgraded, they have what's called the Baja Special, where they've sort of bulked it up a little bit and kind of brought it up with some newer uh, materials and these kind of reels you cannot go wrong with. They're, they're very good and very versatile. Um, the only thing you don't really, you're not going to do with these reels is pitch baits. Uh, they're just too big to sort of to, uh, to try to pitch a bait with them. They're more for bottom fishing and trolling and uh, um, or flat lining a bait you know at anchor or, or floating a bait under a balloon or something where you're you're, you, you don't have to cast. Um, the spinning reels are much better for casting and the light conventional reels are better for casting. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, third group, which is conventional reels, but they're high tech. Um, they're high tech in that they're, uh, they, uh, the manufacturers have gone to uh, really um, light alloys. Um, they've re-engineered all the gears and stuff to be really strong and, and uh, they've succeeded in reducing the weight of the spool which is important for being able to cast um, these reels all like I say are very multifunctional you can bottom fish with them you can troll with them you can pitch baits with them um, they're they, they really do represent the future of fishing um, let's you know there's a lot of manufacturers that uh, that are making the new style rigs and let's just take a look at, at some of them okay here's one from um from uh, Accurate, this is from their Boss series. You can see it's a very, very strong looking reel. Here's one from Abbott. Uh, this is a little um, smaller one that would kind of take the place of a spinning reel. Here's some bigger ones from Abbott. Um, again, very strong, very powerful. These all have very nice spools for casting. Uh, here's one from Pin. This is a Torque series, comes in uh, lever drag and star drag. Um, Here's one from Shimano. This is a Talica. Very good casting. Uh, very strong. Have very strong drags. And here's a larger one um, from uh, another Talica. These come in one speed and two speed. Very strong. Big handle. Great reel. Okay, in closing, um, I wanted to kind of point out that um, you need to have kind of a variety, multiples of each one of these varieties of reels. Um, you want to be able to have two or three people fishing whichever setup you're you're doing at that particular time it you know if you if you're doing light pitching you're not going to be using your trolling reels and if you're doing if you're trolling you're not going to be using your pitching reels so you have to have enough of each one of these to sort of get everybody involved on the boat uh, with whatever their job is in that particular instance so um, multifunction get the best reels you can buy and, uh, and have fun. Take it easy.